Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how to create this fantasy composition here. This is a composite of multiple photos that have been sort of blended together to create this overall fantasy photo manipulation here. I'm calling this sort of a beach from another world because I've changed the color of the sand and the water and the sky and I've added in this photo of this girl holding an umbrella and she's sort of floating here and we've got some lightning going on, we've got rain, which I added in, and we've got some mist happening here. So a lot of cool stuff going on here, and this is a fairly advanced tutorial, but I'm gonna break it down in a way that beginners can understand. And of course, for this tutorial, I'll be using the latest version of GIMP, which at the time of this tutorial is GIMP 2.10.4. But of course, before we get into all that, I wanna direct you guys over to my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, we have tons of GIMP video and text tutorials on here, as well as Project Translate, GIMP playlists, you can support us on Patreon, and you can see our poll of the week results, so definitely check that out. You can also enroll in our best-selling GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher, and I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So here's actually the original photo of the girl I used holding the umbrella, and I got this on Pixabay, and then I also used this photo of a thunderstorm and then a photo of a California sunset. And I also used this mist brush pack from DeviantArt, and you could click this download link here. And then also I have a text tutorial on how to install brushes in GIMP. So I'll include a link to that in the description of the video so you guys can install this brush pack. And here again is the final result. So let's go ahead and get started on this. I'm gonna start by coming back over here to the photo of the girl holding an umbrella. And what I need to do to this photo first is add transparency so that I can erase the background. So to do that, I'm gonna click on my layer here. I'm gonna right click and go to add alpha channel and that will go ahead and add a layer of transparency underneath here. The next thing I'm gonna do is erase the background, but I wanna do it in the most non-destructive way possible. So to do that, I'm going to right click on here and go to add layer mask, and under initialize layer mask two, I'm gonna choose white full opacity and click add. So now we've got a white layer mask on here. I'm gonna come over here and grab my paintbrush, and if I hit the D key on my keyboard, it's gonna reset my colors to black and white here. And my paintbrush is pretty large right now, so I'll just turn the size of this down using the size slider. And now when I paint black on my layer mask, you'll see that it's going to go ahead and erase the background here. And you could tell that it's transparency because you'll see a dark gray and light gray checkerboard behind here. And so what I did is I went through and I just erased this and I decreased the size of my brush here using the brackets on my keyboard or the size slider. And uh, as I got closer, I just used a smaller brush. And then you can grab the zoom tool here and zoom in. And when you get real close, you can again grab your brush, decrease the size of it, and just sort of work on uh, getting as close to these edges as possible. And the more you zoom in and the smaller of a brush you use, the more precise you can get with this. So I'll just decrease the size of my brush here. And I'm keeping a soft brush just because I don't want the edges to be too hard while I'm erasing. And I'm not gonna go through the entire erasing the background part because it did take me a while. Uh, but basically, once I erased the background, I went ahead and grabbed my crop tool here, make sure the fixed aspect ratio option is turned off. And I did my best to crop this so that there is an even amount of space between the left side and the right side where the umbrella is here. And I'm making sure also that I include a little past the feet and a little bit above the umbrella here. And then just go ahead and click to crop it. And so here was my final result with the background erased. And I didn't do a perfect job of erasing the background, but it's definitely good enough. So we're going to sort of fix it as we go uh, as needed. And you can see I have my layer mask over here. And if I right click and just disable this layer mask, you can see here is our original photo. So I'll just right click and uncheck that disable layer mask option. And what I'm gonna do is copy and paste this onto the photo of our beach but I need to open up that photo real quick. So I'll go to file and in my case, open recent cause I already opened this. And right here is my photo of the beach here, the original. So I'll click on that. You guys can always just find the file on your computer, right click, go to open with and choose GIMP to open up your images into GIMP. And there's really two options here. You can either keep this realistic and keep the colors the same, or you could do what I did and make this sort of a surreal, otherworldly looking photo. So uh, what I did is I just shifted the hue so that the colors in my beach scene were a little bit different, a little bit out of the ordinary. And the way I did that was I just went to colors and you can go to hue chroma or hue saturation, either one will work. But I'm gonna click on that and that'll bring up my hue chroma dialog box here. 
and I'm just going to shift the hue and you'll see as I move this hue over a little bit the colors in my image change and you can make these colors whatever you want really. I went with this color around 55 or so. So you can see now our sand is like a pinkish color and I'll go ahead and click OK. And so now we have our surreal beach here. Now what I'm going to do is come over here to our photo of the girl without the background and I'm going to click and drag and I'm going to drag it on top of this tab here and then come down here and go ahead and release. And that is going to drop in our image as a new layer and it's going to be called dropped buffer. I'm just going to change that to girl with umbrella and hit enter. And there's some few noticeable things right off the bat about this image. Number one is it's too large and number two, the lighting and the colors of this don't really match the lighting and the colors of our beach scene here. But we don't want her to have purple skin or anything. I mean, you can if you want to, but in my case, I just kept her looking fairly normal. But what I'm going to do first off is grab my scale tool and go ahead and click on this layer of the girl with the umbrella. Make sure my chain icon is linked here and I'm going to go ahead and scale her down a little bit. So I'm just clicking and dragging to do that. And then I'm going to click in the middle here and drag that so that I can reposition her. And we could scale it down maybe a little more and put her about right here. And I'll go ahead and hit scale. And she's going to be a little bit off center and we're going to fix that in a little bit. And by the way, when I use my scale tool, I had the interpolation set to no halo just so I didn't lose too much quality on that. The next thing I'm going to do is grab my flip tool here. And I'm going to make sure my direction is set to horizontal and I'm just going to click once and that's going to flip our girl over. The reason I did that was because there's more light hitting the left side of her. Uh, well, it's the left side now that we flipped it, but there's more light hitting the side of her face and less light on her back side here. And if you look at our photo, the sun is over here to the left. So there's a lot of light on the left side of our image and then on the right side is a little bit dark. And so I just wanted to switch this around so that the highlights are facing the highlights in this image and vice versa. And that just makes this look a little bit more realistic. And then the next thing I'm going to do is grab my alignment tool here, click on this layer, and then go ahead and align this to the center of the image. And so now we have this girl in the perfect center. And then I can also align this to the middle of the target, which is basically horizontally aligning this, uh, or I guess you can make the case that that's vertically. But anyway, uh, we're vertically and horizontally aligning this to the center of our image, which puts the girl perfectly in the center. Now I need to work on the colors to basically make this blend in a little bit better with the photo behind it. And I'm just going to grab my move tool for simplicity's sake, but I'm going to go to colors, levels to start. And here's our levels tool and I'm just going to drag these three triangles here. The left one is the shadows. So you can see as I drag this, it gets a little darker and then I'll drag my highlights in a little bit. And you can see some of our highlights start to stand out a little bit. So we're adding a little contrast here while also just adjusting the general uh, brightness and uh, overall colors of this. So here's before, here's after. You can see there's a little bit more contrast and uh, she's blending in a little bit better with the image behind her. All right, so that's going to be good enough for me and I'm going to go ahead and click OK now. And so she should blend in now a little bit better with the background. We're not done with this, so we're going to continue to work on this as we go. But the next thing I'm going to do is the color balance. So I'm going to go to colors, color balance, and I'm just going to again adjust this so that she fits in a little bit better with the image behind her. And again, we're not entirely trying to match the uh, pink and blue colors that are behind her because they are uh, pretty saturated colors and we don't want her skin to look completely fake. But we do want to make it look like there's some light bouncing off and hitting her and therefore uh, making her appear to be a slight tint of that color. So we're really just adding these tints without overdoing it. So you can see that I'm adding a little bit of red, adding a little bit of magenta, and also a little bit of blue when it comes to the shadows and the midtones. And here's a before, here's an after. So before you could see she was a little bit more of a golden color and now she's a little bit more of this magenta bluish teal color. And then I'm going to come over to the highlights, do the same thing. And I'm just sort of moving my slider back and forth to see what looks better. And for the highlights, originally I did add a little bit of yellow to this. And so here is a before, here's an after. I actually earlier created a preset of this which you can click on here to create a preset if you want to save your current settings as a preset. And so if I come down here, there's one called Umbrella Girl. 
This was the original uh, settings that I used, so you guys can copy these settings if you want the exact same settings I used the first time I did this. And here's the settings for the shadows. And here's a before and after, so go ahead and click OK. The next thing I'm going to do is create a new layer, and I'm going to name this Highlights. And with GIM 2.10 and above, you can add color tags to your image. I didn't really use any color tags the first time I created this composition. And I'm going to change Fill Width to Transparency and go ahead and click OK. So the goal of this Highlights layer is we're going to basically make the light that's uh, coming from the sun and bouncing off of this sort of pinkish sand here appear as if it is basically bouncing off of our subject as well. So we're going to create sort of a reflection to make this girl blend in more with the uh, background that we're using here and make it appear as if our model was here when the original photo was taken. So I'm just gonna grab my zoom tool and click once to zoom in a little bit. And now I'm gonna click on this girl with umbrella layer, right click and go to alpha to selection. That's gonna create a selection area around our model. And I'm gonna come back up here to the highlights layer and the reason I did that was because now whenever we paint the uh, color of these pink highlights, it's going to only paint the girl and it's not going to paint anything outside the uh, girl here. So now I'm going to grab my airbrush tool and I'm going to change my foreground color here by uh, clicking on my foreground and then I'm going to click on the eyedropper tool. And I'm just going to click and drag this around until I get a nice bright pink color that I like. So I'll go with this color right here and I'll click OK. And now I'm going to increase the size of my brush here. And I have my opacity set to around 74%, 75% right now. And I have the hardness set down to about, looks like 15% or so. And then what I'm gonna do is just come over here to the legs and I'm just going to draw this. And I actually am going to hit Control Z and I'm going to increase the hardness here because I don't want the edges being too fuzzy on here. Control Z again, increase the hardness a little bit more. So you can see now that I'm airbrushing this sort of pinkish color on the model here, and it's making it appear as if the light is bouncing off of the sand and uh, hitting her legs here. And I'm gonna decrease the size of my brush a little bit. And I really only painted the areas that I thought were like facing the sand here. I'm gonna hit Control Z, decrease the size of my brush. I don't want that much pink on her face. And then I'll just do a little bit here on the umbrella. And so if I hit Control Shift A, that'll select none. And you can see now we have these highlight colors bouncing off of our model. And if they're too prominent for you, you can go ahead and click on your highlights layer and change this to another mode. I believe I used hard light originally, so that's just going to help blend this a little bit. So there's a before and there's an after. All right, before I move on any further, I'm just gonna go ahead and clean up uh, some parts of the background here that I missed when I was doing the removal process. So I'm gonna grab my zoom tool and zoom in a little bit. And I'm just gonna grab my eraser tool and make sure I'm clicked on the girl with umbrella layer. And I'm going to decrease the size of my eraser and use the brackets on my keyboard to decrease this. And I'm just going to erase these parts that I missed right here around the feet, the parts that really stand out. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab my zoom tool and zoom out. And I'll grab my move tool. So the next thing I'm gonna do is add a soft glow to our model here. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this main layer twice by hitting the duplicate icon. And so now we have two duplicated layers here. I'm gonna change one of these to soft glow. And then I'll change the other one to screen. And I'm just going to move the soft glow layer below our original layer. And I'm just going to hide these two layers here. And with my soft glow layer selected, I'm going to go ahead and hit the forward slash key on my keyboard and type soft glow. And right here we have the Gaggle version of soft glow. Below that is the original version. Uh, the Gaggle version is a little bit better, so I'll just double click on that. And you'll see here what this basically does is it turns the highlights of our layer into a soft glow. And so I'm gonna increase the brightness of this. And the glow for the most part is contained within the actual outline of our model here. It doesn't really go too far outside of that. And I'm gonna turn this up to around 75 brightness and click OK. And then I'm gonna to go to filters, blur, Gaussian blur, and go ahead and turn the blur of this up a little bit. So around 11 and I'll click OK. 
And now if I unhide the original layer, you can see there's a glow behind her now, but it really doesn't look great. So what I'm gonna do is come over here and unhide our screen layer and go ahead and change the mode of this to screen. And you'll see what that does is it allows some more of the glow to shine through while also keeping some of the original colors from our image. And I'm just going to tone this down a little bit. And so there we go. Now we have a nice uh, glowing model here. So another thing we can do is click on our original model layer, grab the zoom tool and zoom in. And now that we have a glow going around our image, what we can do is grab the eraser tool and continue to erase any parts that we missed during the background removal portion. And because there's two other layers below this, one of which has a glow on it, the other of which has the black screened out, you'll see that as we erase, it's really erasing just the black part of the image here without erasing the rest. And so that just allows an easier way to go around this image and erase those parts that we missed. Now you do want to be careful around the face because you don't want to erase too much of the face there. But you can see this is blending a lot better now. And really you don't want to erase too much of the edge in general. Uh, otherwise it won't work, especially around the uh, skin or you know her arms or whatever. So I'm trying to really stick close to the original outline here. And you'll see there I erased way too much so I'll hit Control Z. And the more time you take on this and the more precise you are, the better this will look. And if you mess up like I did right here, you can hold the Alt key and that'll bring up the Unerase tool and go ahead and paint that part back in. And then if you release the Alt key, you can go back to erasing. All right, so grab my zoom tool and zoom out here. And let me actually just fix this one part here the uh, metal part of the umbrella. And I'll grab my zoom tool and zoom out. And now you'll see that we've cleaned up the outline here around our model. She's starting to blend in a lot better with our photo. And I'm just gonna hit control and click to zoom out one last time. And now what I'm gonna do is drop in the photo of our lightning storm. So I'm gonna come over here to the photo of the lightning storm and click on this tab and drag it over here and go ahead and drop it into our composition. And by the way, I downloaded the 2200 by 1467 version of this photo. And for the photo of the girl and the beach, I used the 1920 versions of the photos. So the photo of the lightning storm should just be a little bit bigger than the photos of the girl and the beach. And so now this is dropped in here as a dropped buffer layer. I'm gonna click and drag this to the top and this is just temporary, and I'm gonna change this to Storm. And I'm gonna use my Move tool to move this up a little bit, and I'm actually going to decrease the opacity of this layer a little bit. And what I wanna do is match the horizon line of our beach to the, basically the horizon line of, you know, where the power lines and stuff are. And I'm gonna drag this up a little bit, and I'll drop it about there. I actually flipped this image, so I'm gonna click on our Flip tool again, Click once on here and that'll go ahead and flip this. And I'm just gonna drag it so this power line here is a little bit below that horizon line. And we can always move this again if we need to. But the next thing I did is I added a layer mask to this. So I'm gonna right click on the storm layer and go to add layer mask. And I'm going to choose white and click add. And then I grab my paintbrush tool here and I'm gonna change this back to black. Increase the size here. And now I'm just going to erase the parts of the city down here. And I'm going to keep some of the lightning for now. Really any part that overlaps the horizon line there is going to get erased. So there we go. 
Now, if I go ahead and click on here and increase the opacity all the way, this is what this currently looks like, which obviously doesn't look great. But now I'm going to drag this below all of the layers of our girl holding the umbrella. And I also need to shift the hue of this so that the color is a little bit different. I want the color to match the color of this beach. So I'm going to go to colors, hue chroma again. And once again, I'm going to shift the hue of this over. And I'm going to shift it about the same as what we did for the beach. So this is at, again, negative 54 or so. Uh, you can adjust either way to see if the colors look a little bit better one way or the other. I'm just going to keep this at about the same for now, though, because these colors seem to match pretty well. And I'll click OK. This is obviously way too prominent. We want it to blend in with the original sky a little bit better, especially since we have a sun right here and the sun is reflecting on the water. So I'll click on this storm layer and I'll change the layer mode to addition here. And you'll see now that's going to blend this layer in a little bit better. And so the sun's coming through here through the clouds and then the storm clouds kind of blend in with the other clouds below it and allows the colors to match a little bit better. If you want, you can also go to colors, levels, and adjust the levels of this photo to try to match the contrast of the other beach photo and of the model photo here. So I'm just doing what I did to the model photo and just sort of playing with the levels here. So there's a before, there's an after. And I'll go ahead and click OK. Now what I need to do is sort of blend the horizon a little bit better. And this is going to take a couple steps, but the first step is I'm going to create a new layer and name this Horizon Highlight and hit Enter. And so here's our Horizon Highlight layer. I'm just going to grab my brush tool, switch over to white, increase the size of this so the brush is fairly large, and then decrease the hardness of the brush. I want it to be a fairly soft brush. And I'm just going to paint along the horizon here. I'm then going to decrease the opacity of this, and then I'm going to change the layer mode to a soft light. And I'll just play around with the opacity a little bit. You'll see this is sort of just creating a highlight and also blending the parts where the horizons meet here. So here's a before, here's an after. Just brightens it up a little bit. This is also going to help the mist, which we're gonna add in the next step, blend in with the horizon here. So I'm gonna go ahead and create the mist now. And to do that, I'll create another new layer and just name this Mist and click OK. And I'm going to keep the paintbrush tool still selected. And assuming you have those Mist brushes installed that I showed you guys the link to in the beginning of the tutorial. And uh, once you go ahead and install those brushes, by the way, just hit this green arrow here to refresh your brushes. And those new brushes should show up in your brushes dialog here. And by the way, if you don't see your brushes dialog, just go to Windows, Dockable Dialogs, and click on Brushes and it should show up somewhere in GIMP. But once I have the brushes downloaded, I'm just gonna click on these brushes and you can tell the ones that are the mist brushes because it says mist here in the name. And I'm just gonna cycle through these and decrease the size here and basically using white as my color and painting on the mist layer, I'm just going to paint various uh, mists around our image here. And you'll see that as I change my brushes, uh, they, the size is going to be huge. So you're going to have to adjust the size of these down and up as you want them. You can also change the angle here if you want to paint these at a different angle and just create some different effects. And I'm just cycling through these to create some variety. And I'm painting some above the horizon as well as some brushes below the horizon. And you should also paint these brushes out here towards the middle a little bit. I'm just going to increase the size of this. That way it looks like the mist is sort of traveling out into the sea. And the reason that I usually paint a brush, uh, I'll do one stroke on one side and one on the other, is because these brushes typically look different on their left and right halves. So if I created an imaginary line down the middle of this brush, you could see the left and the right are not symmetrical. So because these are asymmetrical brushes, I tend to create one stroke on the left side of the image and one stroke on the right side of the image. All right, so that looks good enough for me as far as the mist goes. 
Next, I want to add an artificial shadow below our model here so it looks like she's floating above this beach. And that's just going to further make this look more realistic. And to do that, I'm just gonna change this brush back to a circular brush. And you can see I've got the hardness set to 25 right now. I'm gonna switch the color back to black. And I'm gonna create a new layer and name this shadow and hit enter. And I just need to make sure the shadow layer is below all of my model layers. And now I'm just going to roughly draw, and actually let me increase the size of my brush a little bit. I'm just going to roughly draw like a circular shadow shape here. This is very rough right now. And then I'm going to grab my scale tool here, click on my shadow layer, and I'm going to uncheck this uh, chain link or unlink this chain link icon here, and then click and drag this down a little bit. That's going to squeeze that shadow layer a little bit. So it's a little more of an ellipse shape or a little bit more elongated and less circular. And then I'm going to just uh, move this around until I get the shape I want it to be or the size I want it to be. And basically what I'm looking for is the shadow is going to pretty much end where her feet end and then also where the umbrella ends up here. It might go a little bit beyond those objects, but for the most part, it's going to be about the same size of that. I'll just move this a little bit. And we'll go with about right there. So I'll go ahead and click scale. And so there is our shadow layer. I want to increase the size of the boundary of this layer so I can play with it a little bit more. So I'm just going to go to layer, layer to image size. And then I'm going to grab my race tool, decrease the size of this brush and also the hardness. And then I'm just going to make this a little bit thinner in the middle here because Basically, the umbrella is a little bit thicker than the rest of the model, so the shadow would probably, you know, come in a little bit and then go back out, like so. It doesn't have to be perfect. But now I need the shadow layer to blend in with the beach a little bit better and just make it look like the shadow is actually resting on the sand, versus right now it just looks like I painted it with a black paintbrush. So to help it blend in better, I'm going to change the mode of this layer to overlay. And then I'm going to decrease the opacity to around 40%. And now you can see a faint trace of that shadow there, but it does look like it's coming from the girl here. And let me hold shift and click on the shadow. And that's going to hide all the other layers besides the shadow layer. And then I'm going to click and drag this a little bit lower and then shift click on that again to unhide all the layers again. And you can play around with that shadow shape if you don't like it, uh, but I'm gonna leave it as is for now. The next thing I'm gonna do is add a little bit more glow coming from the sun so that it overlaps with their model a little bit more and makes it look like the light from the sun is bouncing off of her. So to do that, I'll create a new layer and I'll just name this sun glow and hit enter. And this time I'm gonna move this layer to the top and you can actually move it above your highlights layer as well. And I'm going to grab my brush tool again and I'll switch the color over to white and actually I'll click on this foreground color, grab my eyedropper tool and just try to grab this uh, sun color here. So it's pretty much a white color and I'll click OK. You may also need to hide all the other layers by shift clicking on the sun layer here. Click on this one more time, grab your eyedropper tool and just click and drag until you get towards the center of the sun here. So it is actually just white in the middle of the sun. So I'll just stick with white and then increase the size of my brush and I'm going to shift click on these layers again to bring them all back up and then click on this top sun glow layer. And I'm gonna to continue to increase the size of this and then I can increase the hardness a little bit here. And I'll just go ahead and click once and you'll see here's a before and here's an after. That just allows some of the glow to spill over onto the model. And you can always undo this if you want and increase the size of the brush if you want more of the sun's glow to land on your model. So there we go. For the next part, I'm gonna add in the rain. So let me just grab the move tool. And for this, I'm gonna create a new layer and name this rain and hit enter. And now I'm going to fill this layer in with black. So I'll grab my bucket fill tool, make sure black is selected as my foreground color and fill this in. The reason I'm doing this is because the plugin I'm about to use requires that you have something within the layer in order to add in this rain. And I'm actually going to be using the free gimmick plugin. And I'll include a link to that in the description of this video. It's a free download. But now I'm gonna to go to filters and here you'll see the gimmick dash QT and I'll click on that. And make sure you're on your rain layer when you do that, by the way. And you can type in rain in your search box here and you'll see here under degradations, I have something called rain and snow. And here are the settings I use for this. So I set the degree or the angle to 90 degrees 
and the speed is at 12.70, the density 45.2 and so on. So you guys can just go down the line here and copy these and go ahead and click apply. If I move this out of the way, you'll see now there is rain on this layer. So go ahead and click OK. And this isn't very helpful because you can't see anything below it. But what we can do is with this rain layer still clicked on, we can come over here and change the layer mode to screen. And that's going to get rid of all the black. And so now all that is revealed is the raindrops. And if you click on this top rain layer, you can adjust the opacity of this. So these are the raindrops here that we're controlling. And so now you can see the rain is a little bit less prevalent there and helps it just blend in with the rest of the composition. Now that we've got a majority of all the elements added in here, I'm just gonna do some final retouching on the girl, on the model, just to help her blend in a little bit better. So this is mainly going to have to do with the lighting that's hitting her body. And so I'm gonna come down here to the girl with umbrella layer, and I'm going to grab the dodge and burn tool. And I'm gonna start with this set to burn, which is going to basically darken the pixels of an area that I'm painting on. And actually, let me grab my zoom tool and just zoom in a little bit here on the model. And I'll grab this tool again. So I have this set to burn. I'm going to switch the range over to the shadows here and just increase my exposure. And so the more exposure I add, the darker the pixels will be and the less exposure, the uh, less dark it'll make the pixels. And so now I'm just going to paint on the back side of her here that's facing away from the sun because these pixels will be a little bit darker. There's a little bit less light hitting her. This is just helping to blend this in a little bit better and you can increase the exposure if you need to. And I'll just darken up the feet a little bit there. And you can switch the range over to midtones and do the same thing. Just darken up these pixels here. And same with the highlights. Go ahead and darken those pixels up. So this helps create the illusion that she's facing this light source and the light source is hitting her. And uh, wherever there isn't a light source, she's darker in those areas. So now I'm going to switch this over to dodge and I'll decrease the exposure a little bit and I'll set this to shadows again. Let me decrease this a little bit more maybe. And now I'm going to paint on the front side of her, which is facing the sunlight. And so you'll see that these pixels will become brighter and I'll also paint the umbrella there. And I'll do the same for the midtones. So only painting the parts of her facing the light source and also the highlights, which I'll turn down a little bit because these will be a little bit intense. And if I grab my zoom tool and zoom out, you'll see that shading looks a little bit better there. Now I'm going to add a vignette. So I'll create a new layer and name this vignette and hit enter. And I'll click and drag this towards the top here. And I'll go to filters, light and shadow, Vignette, and you can play around with the settings here. I'm gonna pretty much leave my settings as is and click OK, and just decrease the opacity of the vignette here on the layer itself. And so you can see our composition has really come together now. The next step is I'm going to export this as a JPEG and then color balance the entire JPEG and add a color overlay. And that's just going to help blend our colors in together a little bit better. So I'll go to File, Export as, and I'll keep the name on this the same, and I'm going to click on select file type by extension and scroll down until I find JPEG and click export. I've already exported this one, so I'll just hit replace, and I'll make sure the quality is turned all the way up to 100 and hit export. Now if I want to open that JPEG image, I'll go to file, open recent, and it should be right here, and I'll click on that. So I'm just going to subtly adjust the color balance. So I'll go to colors, color balance. And you'll see that as I'm doing this, this is sort of blending all the colors together because it's color balancing everything at the same time. So everything will have sort of the same color tint to it. So there is a before and there's an after and I'll click okay. The last step, I'll add a color overlay. So I'll just create a new layer and name this color overlay and hit enter. And now I'll grab my bucket fill tool and I will change the color back to this pink color we used earlier. If you didn't save it, just grab your eyedropper tool again and select the pink from the sand here. But I'll click OK and I'll click to fill in this layer with that pink color. Then I'll change the layer mode here to soft light, decrease the opacity. I just want there to be a tint of this color. I don't want it to be too overbearing. 
and there we go. So that's it for this tutorial. If you liked it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash daviesmediadesign. You can also visit our website at daviesmediadesign.com and you can enroll in our GIMP best-selling photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher on Udemy. And I'll include a link to that as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.